helping students compete for jobs in the next economy through digital arts. Hi, I'm Steve Swatt for Comcast Newsmakers. Thanks for joining us. And our guest this segment is Dr. William Bronston, who is the founder of an organization called Tower of Youth, which right. was fascinating. You started that. Thanks for being with us, first of all. You started that organization 20 years ago um, as a medical doctor, and you've just sort of reapplied uh, your skills toward your real passion, right? It's, uh, it's been a long run, but this is our 20th anniversary for the Tower of Youth, and we've had a chance to work with somewhere around 10,000 kids in the last 20 years who have produced across the region and across the United States and Canada roughly 1,500 movies which we have archived, which really represents the treasure of the first 20 years of children who have had the opportunity to take digital media arts in high school in the 21st century. They are the harbingers of the new economy, the harbingers of the new social message to the world about a different value system that is anti-violence, anti-craziness, anti-hunger, anti-illiteracy. Uh, it's a great, a great wave of change which we're just about to begin to evaluate because I've never gone to look at what's happened to our kids now that they've grown up and gone into the commercial world. Explain to our viewers how making movies digitally is the harbinger of our economic future. Art is one of the most powerful ways of getting to the general community with passionate ideas and moving images. Movie making is the absolute apogee. It's the, it's the pinnacle of great art that requires a village, a studio, in order to make a movie. Our kids that have gone into media arts at the high school on their own recognizance have bought into learning and being able to share their stories, their dreams, their work together with us through their movie making. The audience for a movie is not one person. It's, it's an uncounted number as a result of being on YouTube, on being on the internet, on showing in film festivals and so forth, and it provides them with the ability to be organized, the ability to be relevant and significant, the ability to be compassionate and creative and original, the ability to make friends and network in a way that is enormous. It's an open-ended dynamic. Now the problem is that the 20th century organization of the industry of media arts really is archaic in, in relationship to the new needs of the 21st century children who didn't have cell phones and media equipment and couldn't generate the kinds of magnificent products that they generate now. I know you've been very critical over the years of the educational establishment for not including digital right. arts sufficiently in right. the schools. Over 20 years though, have you made some improvements? No, I don't think so. I think that the establishment is still, the education community is still resistant to opening up all classes, all programs with this technology. It's very threatening to teachers. It's very, it's very alienating for the people in policy positions because it puts children in a whole different power position to learning and to the school system per se. The kids can come to school with content now without having to come to school for that. What the schools have to do is fundamentally change their position so that they're teaching applications, project-based learning, wisdom, community service, and a whole range of, of commitments. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time for this segment, uh, but I love your passion, and I always enjoy talking to you when you come on this program. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Dr. I Ronson, really appreciate it. Thank you very it. much for coming by. Thank you, sir. And thanks to our viewers also for watching Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Steve Swatton. We hope to see you next time. <laughs>